Hello, hello. It's uh, the second stream for this week. My name is Patrick for Calypso hello, Media. Hello. And uh, um, today I have My name is a special Calypso guest. And uh, it's Jonas from Gaming Mind Studios. Hey, Jonas. How are you? Hi, I'm great. How are you doing? Thank you for having me again. Uh, yes, uh, it's always um, always a pleasure having um, someone from the developer here because this is some... Ah, yeah, yeah. Here is the man. Awesome. Okay. Um, yes. <laughs> now I got out of my, my concept. Yes, it's, it's some nice... Uh, staff having the d developer um, here, you can ask because Calypso Media is the publisher. Gaming Mind Studios is the developer of uh, games like Port uh, Royal, um, Railway Empire, for example, and um, those are very, very large games. And uh, yeah, from you guys, uh, the latest game comes, and it's Railway Empire Two, which we will we'll, we'll play today. But uh, first of all. Um, uh, reminder, the Steam Strategy Fest 2023 is on the run. There are a lot of games from uh, Calypso Media there, um, like Disciples. Yesterday we played Disciples Liberation, an um, amazing um, dark fantasy uh, strategy game. Um, we have the Dungeon series, Dungeons 2, Dungeons 3, and if you check that out, 50% off of um, uh, dungeons. No, Dungeons 3 is 75%. There's so many numbers. Dungeons 3, the base game, 75% off, and for the DLCs, is 50%. But so if you have um, the game and you have a lot of DLC, but one is missing, now is the chance um, to get that missing DLC. It's also Grand Ages of Medieval and Grand Ages Rome, 50% discount. Immortal Realms, one of my favorite Calypso Media games, um, is also 50% off. What else do we have? Oh, Medieval of Gangsters, 60% off. Port Royal 4, yes, we, we talked about that. Um, the Extended Edition, 67% discount. That's amazing, and there is a, a lot of a lot of stuff in there. the The good old Railway Empire, seventy percent discount and fifty percent for all the DLCs. And how many DLCs do we have for Railway Empire? I Cross think the original had nine DLCs by the end. Crossing the Uns, Down Under, France, Germany, Great Britain and Ireland, Japan, Mexico, Northern Europe. The Great Lakes. That is a lot of content, and that also means for me this game was a success. Otherwise, you would not produce so many DLCs. Uh, but also this game, Railway Empire 2, although it is a pretty um, new game, you can get Railway Empire 2 or you can also get the uh, deluxe edition of it with a 10% discount. But that is that is also nice for such a... Um, new game, Space Based Utopia. Really love that game. Thanks, the 7% discount. Oh, awesome. Tropico stuff. Tropico 6, 60% off. And then um, different discounts for the DLCs, soundtrack, etc. Enough uh, home shopping. <laughs> <laughs> home shopping content. Um, I think you can definitely check out that by yourself. Um, go to Steam and um, check out Calypso Media Games if you're missing anything like that. So now we have, uh, or you have prepared something um, for us. Um, a terrain we haven't discovered in our Railway Empire 2 streams yet. Yes, indeed. I have uh, prepared a very um, <clears throat> nice view for us to start off with. Um, and t uh, tonight we're playing the uh, Alps scenario. Um, and uh, before that, I, I think the other streams played a lot of uh, American maps and, uh, of course, the 
one stream ago wh when I was here we did Scandinavia so uh, today it's time for something um, a little a little more challenging terrain wise so uh, we are in the Alps we are playing the Alps scenario not just the free game and we are starting off in the city of I think it's pronounced Nis in English although uh, do forgive me if I say nice because it's just uh, it has a nice <laughs> ring to it <laughs> yes I would I would say nice but but it's not I don't know. Yeah, but I'm pretty are, sure it's Nis. Yeah. But th those are all um, real uh, towns. These are all real towns. Uh, we yes. uh, had to really think which towns to include here and uh, which towns to not include. Because, um, especially in this region, uh, space is a bit limited. Uh, for example, we uh, had to decide against... Um, putting a river in the, uh, well, the actual uh, Italian basin here, uh, mm -hmm. because there's just no room, or at least uh, when we were planning this, there just was no room. But, so, we uh, start the um, up scenario, let's take a peek at our tasks. We uh, have to um, achieve an express status on the line between Nice and Turin. 65,000 in the Provence and Dauphiné region, and uh, we have to produce nine loads of clothing in Nice via one of our factories. So, um, yeah, I'll just get started on that, and um, we'll see how the evening goes. As you can see, the terrain is going to be fun, uh, but I yes, think yes, we'll see. manage. There, there are, it's, it's not that f flat, definitely. <laughs> the, we have the Alps here, so uh, this could be quite tricky because uh, tunnels and uh, gonna be more expensive than oh. um, just a straight track. Exactly. Also, um, I challenged myself a bit. I chose uh, Barty Shallow as my character and, um, of course, his buffs are mainly about playing with the AI or uh, well, mainly playing with the AI um, but his debuffs always hit hard. We have a 30% mm -hmm. high cost for everything. Uh, well, tra uh, tracks, tunnels, and bridges, at least no uh, factories. So mm -hmm. um, that is going to be a bit more challenging than a usual playthrough of uh, this scenario with any other character. And that's important. You have a, um, a few characters there that uh, have different advantages and dif disadvantages. And so you can manage a little bit of a... Um, of a difficulty level by your by yourself, but in the um, but in the game you cannot choose between the characters. So this is set by the by the story, right? Um, in some scenarios where it made actually <laughs> sense to uh, well restrict the choice because for story reasons, for example, yeah. sometimes um, only certain characters are restricted because, for example, mm -hmm. they appear as a mentor or something. And um, some scenarios like this one are completely free. You can basically do whatever you want. In the campaign, this is there is set. Oh yes, in the campaign, it's it, it, it set. The idea there yeah. was to uh, introduce the players to uh, almost every characters uh, via the campaign, so they have seen everything. And uh, you see all characters in the campaign except uh, except for the gangster. And, uh, well, <laughs> he he got the short end of the stick because we only have five campaign missions and we have six characters. So that was unfortunately unavoidable. Uh, yes, from Snuffled, hello. Yes, you promised you are going to be here tonight. Um, yes, if, uh, he, he has a very good tip uh, for us. If we want to cross the Alps, um, he recommends Elephant. <laughs> yes, yes, a, a very really uh, fair assessment. Really have. Did did he activate the cheat mode accidentally with uh, with that comment? Well, perhaps he was trying to take Rome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yes, you you absolutely need elephants for that uh, if you're coming uh, from this direction. But um, I mean. Uh, I have uh, some experience with that. I have been playing a lot of Crusader Kings 3 lately. Um, Patrick, what have you been uh, playing lately? I've been 
happening lately? Disciples Liberation. <laughs> oh, oh, that makes sense. Yes. <laughs> uh, yes, and um, it was it was great again um, playing that game um, after after a time. And I still must say this is a quite good game. And I thought I was not well prepared yesterday uh, because there is so many stuff. But uh, I think I could uh, lead the audience um, or new, maybe new um, uh, disciples, fans um, through um, all that that functions and so on. And I, I could remember um, more than basics. It is a, ni a very nice uh, a system, and I told them there are usually you, you have your units and you fight against the the uh, opponent units, but in this game you also have a back, and uh, the back line cannot die, and they will give you buffs um, during the battle, uh, but sometimes it's in every round, and uh, some units give you a buff from the beginning and you will keep that buff till the end of the till the end of the fight and this is pretty good because usually in in games like that you will get units at the beginning and a couple of hours later those units are worthless hmm. and but these there are some units they have really strong backline abilities they only that they only use if you put and that can make uh, the longevity of a, of a character um, even higher and um, this is what I really like uh, uh, about that that concept of this game that's super interesting I I have to say even though I work for Calypso I haven't played that one yet I uh, I think I need to pick it up at some at some point so if you are interested in um, the dark fantasy um, strategy games so if you did you Tell me that you are writing, that you're also a writer. Yes. Uh, so yes, I, I did a lot of writing for uh, Railway Empire, in fact. So okay. um, I think most of the dialogues you'll hear um, and a lot of the in-game text is uh, mm -hmm. actually written by me. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's uh, 19 missions in the game and, uh, and I think 15 I have done. That's a lot. So to um, to the audience, you are a game designer at uh, Gaming Mind Studios. Yeah, game designer and narrative designer. That's where the writing part co uh, comes in. Oh, okay, okay. And okay. Uh, f funny story. My uh, first Railway Empire product was not this, but um, I did some writing on the uh, Japan DLC. And um, funny story there. I, uh, I wrote some um, newspaper articles, like uh, like the serious mm -hmm. ones, the historic ones, and I also wrote a couple of fun articles that you see in the margins <laughs> and in between. And mm -hmm. I, I wrote them, I sent them to my lead, and uh, a couple of weeks after release I, uh, I played some Japan and I realized, hey, wh where are my fun texts? I, I don't oh. see them. And then it mm -hmm. turned out they got... Uh, they got lost on the way, not translated, mm -hmm. and they never made it into the game, and I was so ah. broken up about that one. <laughs> no, no, no. But I have um, uh, an, uh, a similar story. Um, when when I got into that uh, film industry, I'm, I'm working with um, motion picture stuff in different ways since 2006 or so, and um, I worked for a bigger short movie project um, that was really big, large crew and so on. And I did uh, visual effects work on it. And um, so I watched the the result when the movie was edited and everything was, was there. And the director gave me uh, my DVD. Everyone who was involved in that movie got the, a DVD then. And I watched that, and, and he, he said to me, Ah, oh, I wish we had extend the muzzle flashes of the guns. And, uh, and, and in this scene, uh, we should have extend the blood, maybe digital. And I said, I did that. It's on that hard drive I gave to you. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, yeah, that really pretty sucks. Sick. It's... it's 
it's if pretty similar. Like this happens. Yeah. Yeah. You, you you put a lot of work into it, but okay, I was not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it, I, I think sometimes, nobody. Sometimes, sometimes that happens. Yeah. Exactly. I, I, I think nobody even noticed that uh, there were no special fun texts for for the newspapers in the Japan DLC. <laughs> but at least, I, the main work I did were on the historical articles because I had to research them as well. So mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that that they made it in that was the most important part. Yeah. Sure. But uh, yes, I also well. The uh, newspaper articles were uh, written by a different person in Railway Empire 2, but I uh, helped them a lot and I yeah, made sure they are, that they all worked in the tone we, we were going for. Yes, I, 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 so I was, I was right. I, I knew that, that you worked um, on, on that stuff in Railway Empire because I, uh, I had a call with one of your uh, colleagues from the other office and um, he asked me who, who will stream. I think that was one of the last streams we had. And I said, uh, Jonas will, will be part of that. And uh, I said to him, yes, he, he worked on uh, the, the first Rail Railway Empire as well. And he said, no, 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 he didn't work. At that. I said, yeah, yeah, sure, the, the newspaper stuff in Japan. <laughs> he said, no, never. No, no. I said, yes, come on. <laughs> he told me that. So maybe he is lying, or <laughs> no, no. I, I uh, no, absolutely yes, I know. work on the newspapers. Yes, <laughs> Do you have a chance to cover your window? I can see your I... uh, fighting against the sun. Yeah, um, yeah. I, maybe I don't. Unfortunately, up. that usually doesn't happen. <laughs> no, no, um, definitely but... not at this time. You can get up and and uh, try to fix. Is not a problem. Um, I, I yeah, I, that, that window doesn't have have a cover. I also, so people uh, see what we're talking oh. about. I'm um, <laughs> that usually doesn't happen in my setup, but the sun hates me tonight <laughs> for some reason. Oh, no. Well, <laughs> <laughs> damn sun, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <Some stuff like laughs> it's come on, no, no one. No yeah, it will be it will be gone in a, in a minute or two, I think. In, in the next in the next one and a half hours, it will. Be. <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> For me, it's nice. I'm I'm here in a controlled um, studio environment. I have uh, three lamps pointing at me. Um, yeah. Uh, well, no I, sun. I, I wanted the extra challenge with the character I chose, so. Um, here I have my just oh, okay. desserts. <laughs> there, there are all us. So real life hack uh, tips to uh, make it harder beating Railway Empire. 2. Exactly. If you want to challenge Play. yourself, just um, watch watch the sun while you're playing. Yes, and it's not what is right. Yes, this is a blind uh, playthrough. Yeah. <laughs> good one. Very good one. Definitely. But sun is always the a menace for gamers, I think. Exactly. So that is the reason, um, because I love playing um, games um, at home in the cellar. And sometimes uh, I put my console up to the to the uh, living room and uh, make it mm. myself comfortable if no one is at home, and so. But I have to to uh, shut the, the the windows and make make them and darken them because uh, the sun is, is killer. Mm -hmm. Tolix eighty three. Oh, awesome to see you back. Nice. So I, I um, there was a post on Instagram from uh, a woman, and she wrote. My husband, my husband, a grown man, took a day off from work on Friday because he wants to play his new video game for 24 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, yes, okay, and what's, what's the matter? <laughs> that is and, uh, perfectly understandable. <laughs> and and the, the whole comments under this post was... Um, 
you you women you cannot uh, see us men happy <laughs> i i am so going to do that once a hollow knight silk song releases i'm going to take one of my vacation days and i'm just going to play that for a day or so not for a whole weekend we'll see Yes, so maybe I was uh, thinking about uh, doing the same with um, Lords of the Fallen or so. I think that is also uh, very worth it. But um, I, I heard Baldur's Gate 3 right now is very worth playing. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, maybe once it's in my budget I, I will do that for that game. Okay. No, it's it's. Um, I know it's a very good game, and they did an, an excellent uh, job with that uh, game. But it is not my type of game. That's that's all. But um, a lot of respect for this um, for this work. Oh, absolutely. But um, it is something I I would definitely play. Uh, back when I was uh, in school. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, used to. I, I, at some point, I got uh, Dragon Age Origins. I think mm -hmm. in a sale or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Germany, we, as soon as you're like in the upper uh, upper years of school, like tenth, mm eleventh, -hmm. twelfth year, uh, yeah. it it happens that sometimes you have uh, a, a, an hour or two just no scheduled classes and you're on your own yes. to uh, find something to do. And, well, on Fridays I had four of those in a row. Uh, so I got mm. uh, got to school at 8, had classes until 10, had four hours off and then uh, the rest of my school day. So I mm -hmm. used to bring my laptop to school, play Dragon wow. Age Origins <laughs> and then uh, go to my classes. Okay, and so, yeah. Dragon Age Origins was such an awesome game that... Uh, when I had played through it, I mm -hmm. I did something I usually do not do is, um, well, I just started a new save file and completed it again. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, it's it's very, very seldom thing um, for me as well, um, playing a game then um, again after I did it. But uh, you mentioned that word sale. You got it um, in a sale at the moment. <laughs> there is the Steam Strategy Fest 2023 going on, and there are a lot of Calypso games and DLCs and soundtracks in there. So if you want to check that out on Steam with Disciples games like Disciples Liberation, the Deluxe Edition for 50% off. Um, also the soundtrack, 50% discount with the Dungeons 2 and 3. Dungeon 3? 75% disc that is awesome and then the DLCs with a 50% discount we have Immortal Realms Vampire Wars 50% off Grand Ages Medieval and Rome uh, we have Port Royal 4 Port Royal 4 so I was I was claimed from my colleagues because I was I, I said Port Royal for like a yeah, it's a U.S. American accent. And they they said no, it's Port Royal. I said, oh, okay, like in Pulp Fiction, I understand. Yes, the, <laughs> yeah, hamburger Royal. It's not a quarter pounder. And um, yes, Port Royal uh, Four is in that sale as well. The extended edition, sixty-seven percent off. This is amazing. Praetorians, fifty percent off. Ah, uh, what else do we have? Railway Empire 2, the game uh, we are playing right now, making our way through the Alps, is 10% uh, discount for such a new game. It's um, quite nice. And uh, Tropico 6, 60% off. This is, the British guy would say, a bargain. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, speaking of uh, Portrayal 4, um, the first work I ever did for Gaming Mind Studios was was on Portrayal 4. I did the uh, mm -hmm. w w when you play sometimes these historical um, articles pop up and um, mm -hmm. well I I, I was uh, I, I just had sent in my application to Gaming Minds and then uh, that was the first thing I got asked to do even before really starting and uh, then I spent I think two weeks doing nothing else besides um, 
researching what happened every five years and then writing a small history blurb about that. And mm -hmm. I, I think I did one every for every um, five years for the for 150 in-game years. So um, that was a ton of work. <laughs> But, but it's the same when you are um, doing graphic stuff or, or video stuff, so um, you need something like a, like a yes, visual Vita portfolio mm. um, stuff. Sometimes you have to do some, some test work as well as if you, if you can um, that, that is, work uh, with the crew. That yeah. is true. I, I, but. Um, the uh, difference was I, I, I actually got paid for that one, and it was a yeah. lot of work than usual. So uh, oh, that is fair. That is fair. Exactly, and it ended up in the game. It was not just a writing test. Cool, that's good. So if you are working on, like, do you play similar games to? Yes, to get yourself uh, an idea, or you are, or are you confident enough saying so? No, I'm, I'm totally going my way, and I, I know this, uh, this is gonna work well for me. I've well, learned, a l uh, I've played a lot of games, I, enough games. I think um, being too overconfident in your own abilities is a way that uh, leads into a wall very, very fast. So uh, I mm. usually try to expand my horizons. Um, and there are good ideas hiding everywhere, and uh, mm. so I, I try not to uh, close myself off to uh, playing something new or uh, doing games research in the um, area I'm developing a game in. Mm. But uh, as a writer, that doesn't just apply to games, but also to movies. I've uh, watched quite a few movies this year. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just for fun, I made a letterboxed account, and that's a site where you log movies that you watch, yes. and uh, that way you can uh, kind of keep track and you see what your friends watch, and um, once I started tracking, that became really fun to do, and I saw about 20% of the movies I ever saw this year. Hey, that's that's uh, a lot. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah, approaching yeah. 200 movies this year. Oh, oh no. And you can also write um, some some critics um, stuff in there. Exactly. The box. I also... was thinking about uh, doing the same, but um, I'm doing critics on another uh, platform, and and so no, I know I do not have the time to to write uh, critics. Well, if you have um, an Letterboxd. account on Letterbox, definitely let's connect no. there. Ah. No, I haven't. I haven't one yet, but I consider. I consider. Yeah. Uh, try not writing a short section about what past five years. Man, that would be a depressing task. Yes. <laughs> mm, yeah, especially doing nothing else during your day. <laughs> so, uh, so, so then you can can only uh, you can. Take that five years minus two, then it's only three years. You have yeah, to write, uh, stuff exactly. Like. Well, um, the the way I did it uh, was interesting. So I went on Wikipedia. I looked up what happened uh, in any given five mm -hmm. years, and then yeah. I I picked the most interesting events and then did some additional research to find out what else I can do with that, and tried a couple words about that. But in the end, it was fun. While doing it, it was less fun. <laughs> but but, but I, I'm curious about how many newspapers did you get in the year of uh, 1880 or, or so? If, if you were living in a... I don't know. I think, I think it depends on... Um, on, on, on how big the town was, how many newspapers? So, this, so in our times, every day is a new newspaper. Um, but back in the days, hundred. Yeah, I, I guess. Hundred years, hundred, hundred fifty years ago. How many? What, what was the the cycle? Every week, every third day, or so. 
Mm -hmm. Interesting. <clears throat> Which was the, the last movie you watched? The last movie I watched was Paddington um, about Ooh. an hour and a half ago. <laughs> okay, it was good. Yes, good it's it's ve it's a very cute movie. And um, before, good, yeah. before that, I watched uh, Jerry and Marge Go Large, a movie mm -hmm. from last year about two people who uh, game the lottery. Very cute comfort movie. If you like uh, cheese, that is for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I have... So, so one, one tip for you, but I have to uh, check the the English for that one. Um, I really enjoyed it. It's a six-year-old movie. Um, it's on Netflix. It's a Netflix production. But I never saw it somewhere popping up. And then I got the tip. And... Okay. The English title is, for people out there that want to uh, watch a really cool movie, is I don't feel at home in this world anymore. And the German title, if you're typing it in a Netflix, is Fremd in der Welt. Much easier. Hmm, that is uh, not a movie I've heard of before. What is it about beyond it is, feeling mm, estranged? It is, it, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want, want to spoil that much of trying to describe. It's a nurse and it's uh, played by uh, Melanie Linsky, um, was played who played with Kate Winslet in uh, Peter Jackson's Heavenly Creatures, for example, and uh, she also was uh, the character Rose in Two and a Half Men, and um, she's a nurse and uh, she's she's not very satisfied with with everything out there. She she lives um, in a house in an an area where everyone has a as a has a house but that typical us plastic houses you know and um there are people that uh yeah they're not do what what she, she wants they're very uh missing the word so she's not very satisfied with with life and what other peoples are doing and uh then uh, some people stole their, uh, some people stealing their, uh, her, her laptop, her notebook, and uh, some stuff her grandma left her. And then the police appears and they give in, they say, well, it's, it's your fault, you could have uh, make your house uh, much safer and so on. And that is the point where she tries to find the the, the, the robbers, the gangsters, and um, I think I, it's not good to tell you more about that. <laughs> that sounds interesting. I may uh, check it out later and put it on my watch list. Yes, definitely. It was a, was a good thing. That's a decent translation of the title. How is that possible? Uh, yes, that's definitely. <laughs> it's a very, very long title for the, for the English, English version, but, but amazing, amazing movie. Fremd in der Welt ist von 2017. So, what, would you, what have we approached now? Here are the Alps hours. Um, I am still working on that one. I am currently growing our population in Provence and Dauphiné. And mm -hmm. um, I messed up getting the uh, connection bonus from Vincent Stop. Uh, okay. But now I'm cleaning up my um, line, lines a bit to uh, get a better express bonus and to make more money. Um, it, it's that I have a little bit of money left and I'm trying to make it work with what I'm doing right now. That is that is very important for um, um, new players of uh, Railway Empire 2, that uh, connection bonus. So in the in the first Railway Empire, um, as soon as you connect, so, so there is a, a sign popping up and you know, okay, if I connect that one to my rail system, then I will get uh, that amount of money as a bonus. And then you connect it and you get the money. But now it is not that easy. Now you have to connect it and you have to do uh, something like a, a yeah a transfer you have to transfer something to that and 
only then you will get that connection bonus. Exactly. Uh, people, um, meaning also me when I played Railway Empire 1, uh, kind of used that system where, where they would just connect something, collect the bonus, and then delete the connection to get the refund on the rails. So uh, <laughs> that, that was something we uh, kind of had to change uh, to not keep broken. Yes, it was something, it could have used that as a, some sort of a cheat, connecting everything, getting the bonus and the money, and uh, then uh, deleting all your your tracks, and, uh, and no harm was uh, given to you as, uh, as the emperor of the railway. The emperor of your empire. empire. The emperor of the railway empire. Yes, but by, by, by now um, I'm quite familiar with this uh, region of the world. Not only have I uh, built this uh, map and scenario here, uh, mm. recently in Crusader Kings I've also uh, conquered it twice. Uh, once oh, as the em uh, Emperor of Italy and once as mm. the um, Emperor of uh, Hispania. I started as uh, Catalan uh, culture took over France first and then reunited Spain and mm -hmm. then because uh, it was fun to do I also um, added Corsica and Sardinia to my empire this is definitely an advantage now for you <laughs> for this game <laughs> <laughs> yes I know where things are geographically yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, f fun fact I uh, Pretty late in development, I decided to add uh, Corsica as a playable region to the game because mm -hmm. it, it used to be under the blocked map. And at some point, mm -hmm. I decided, hey, wouldn't if uh, it be fun if you could put rails there and just build a, a ridiculous bridge from here to here or even yeah. to France? So um, I unblocked it and placed some um, rural businesses there. And well, um, since then, you can play on Corsica. The same thing happened to Baja California, by the way. Um, okay. and, and that was really, uh, I think, a week or two before we had to close down for release. So that was very late. Okay, so, so there are possibilities to build some rural businesses there on Corsica? Um, not in this scenario, because okay. uh, it's too far south, but in the free game there are rural businesses there. You can't start ah. there, because the island is too small to have its own city. Yeah, and that was uh, that would have been kind of against the ethos of how we designed the map to place a city mm -hmm. there, because you need to be able to connect cities to make money and get off the island, and that just really was wasn't possible with a, a a place like Corsica. I see, I see. Okay, uh, re really interesting stories. Yes. Okay, I have about a hundred thousand in cash left. Let's see how that goes now. Uh, can you place railways there? Uh, uh, Corsica, yes. You can place railways there, Snowford. Uh, was that a question in the chat? Snowford asked, can you place railways there and then off Corsica? Um, build a bridge. Yeah, you you to, can uh, you can build a bridge from and to Corsica to connect the rural businesses there. You just can't yeah. start the game there, uh, because at, as I said, that would be very. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. it, it would be very easy to soft lock yourself once you run out of money and you don't build a bridge to get off Corsica. That's why there is no city on the island. Uh, I, don't know, I think we, we we just didn't didn't uh, get his his joke. Oh, that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, bonus for new connection. How did that happen? I have money again. Nice. Awesome. So can you build... Um, apparently it failed. This <laughs> joke. Apparently. Um, can you build a tunnel through the Alps? Yes, that is something you can do. Um, okay. We had a very... Uh, I, I I had a very uh, long and iterative process with our level designer where I, mm -hmm. where he was like, okay, I 
you can now build a tunnel through here. And I tested it out and I was like, no, we can't. Please change the map again. And that went back and forth uh, half a dozen times at least. <laughs> but now you it can. <laughs> and it, it seems... It, it only took... Um, a, a couple of grey hairs on my part to get that done. It definitely, I, I, I hear that. So your uh, your career is you needed a lot of elbows, I think. Yes, <laughs> not Throughout because the... the level designer didn't want to help me. It was just uh, no, yeah, a bit no. complicated to make that uh, happen with our level design process. Yes, and and there are always a lot of things to do, and sometimes if stuff falls under the table exactly and, uh, or you cannot um, finish that in an in, in amount of time that is given to you and uh, then there are other priorities first yeah get your get your stuff done that I that's something I heard a lot but I'm not done yet I it's it needs to be perfect <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes there's stuff. I've heard a story from from Realmforge uh, when they were um, developing um, here at Dungeons Four, and at one point they saw I, I think it was a Christmas tree uh, in the dungeons that that beat up all the all the guys, and they said, oh, "What's going on? Where where's this Christmas tree coming from?" And all the coders were checking what's going on there, and in the end, it was just um, a placeholder. Or, <laughs> so it's just just those simple things, and you're trying to to dig there. Where is that thing coming from? And so he's yesterday, just before the stream started. I want. I, I clicked on start stream, and then it was like, no, I cannot connect you. Um, sorry for that. I said, come on, I did a test stream. An hour ago, what is the problem now? <laughs> the problem was that I disconnected the internet from the computer to do an update on another th the network cable, <sighs> and I forgot to switch it back. It's... And I was <laughs> checking checking out all the uh, the stuff, the menus there. What is the reason why it's not connecting? It was just a cable. I yes. completely an operator failure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, speaking of that Christmas tree, uh, good placeholders are an art. You need to be able to to recognize something as a placeholder, and mm -hmm. you have to resist the trans uh, the the, um, the temptation to, for example, write something rude because you think, okay, it's fun, it will get removed later. Because chances are it won't, and yeah. it, if it makes it into the game, and if it is something rude. Um, yeah. You will have an issue. <laughs> Definitely. Um, Primus, hey, nice to see you. I wonder if Calypso did game crossover as DLCs. I accidentally deleted the internet, yeah. How does one even do that? What, what disconnecting the cable um, also, Primus? Um, yeah, about crossover DLCs. Yeah, sometimes. Um, the colleagues uh, and uh, w we're sitting there and we think ah, it would be nice to have uh, this and that and yeah, crossovers. Maybe we had that game Matchpoint Tennis Championship, so maybe you have uh, feature El Presidente from Tropico or Aviana from um, Disciples in that just as, as bonus uh, characters or so. And um, But no, at the moment there is... Uh, nothing planned for that. It's just jokes we're making. The only thing I did in terms of uh, crossover, and you can see the uh, quotation marks I put into the air, um, was that I tried to include a couple of the cities we had in uh, Port Royal into okay. the uh, America map here. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think... Um, I didn't have to remove anything, but I added one or two for, uh, for um, well, the southern U.S. I, I think I added Pensacola and Corpus Christi. I'm, well, um, I, I can't look it up right now, but I think yeah, these okay. weren't included in, um, w well, um, Railway Empire one. Mm. 
Um, but yes, I, I, I do like to uh, in, include stuff if I can. And even if it is just something uh, that is fun for me that only I know about. Yes, but a lot of uh, people are doing that. It's it's not only um, in, in games, it's also in, in, in movies or graphics and stuff like that. And there is a, a graphic, um, and this was definitely planned by some funny designer. Um, I will <laughs> tell you that after the stream, because maybe it's a... Uh, it's not good to do that. <laughs> to tell that. Oh, those are the best <laughs> stories you can tell on stream. Yes, but but I I, I won't do that uh, in in ah, the We'll we tell you um, after our stream. I will tell you that. Um, uh, yes, and, and I like it too that you when you when you see some hints to other games or maybe to the predecessors or so. I really like that. Yeah, I uh, may or may not have. Uh written a couple of Star Wars quotes in something characters say in this game. <laughs> yeah, just like that. And only you can recognize that if you are really uh, in into that, into that pop cultural thing and so on. So I, I watched, I watched uh, a movie uh, in, in the cinema. Uh, the last movie I watched in cinema was oh, God, the, the, the English title. The German was Ruby Taucht Up. I have uh, never heard of that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's, it definitely sounds like a quality German movie. <laughs> yeah, it was not, uh, it... Oh, there we yeah, have Ru one of yeah. the uh, nods I, I mentioned. Fl Flamingo Rail Incorporated. The character mm -hmm. we are playing, he's, uh, he's inspired by a guy called... Um... Ah, damn, I'm blanking on his name. Uh, he looks like Robert De Niro and was a gangster in the 30s, and he uh, ran a hotel c um, called The Flamingo. Uh -huh. um, I will remember the name later, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, uh, that's that's uh, one of the nods I, I was talking about. Sorry, I, I didn't want to interrupt you. No, no problem. A Ruby Gilman Teenage Kraken. That is the, the English title of that. And it's it's an animated... Uh, movie and it was a movie it was okay but someone next year I can't remember that I have seen that movie I'm pretty sure uh, something like that but they had two Ghostbusters hints in there <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that I was the only person in that room who recognized that because I, I was the only one who laughed <laughs> Star Wars quotes. Let's hope Disney doesn't find out and shoo you for everything you own. Oh, so, God. Oh, okay. <laughs> they and they would do that probably. <laughs> probably yes. Uh. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> now our express train should. be be running and making us money. Um, so, our population in this uh, area is growing. So, um, what what remains is to clean up this route, and then I I think it would be wise to go in the direction of Milan and Venice to mm -hmm. get some uh, money off that sweet, sweet Po Basin. Yeah, but for, for people that are not so experienced here in, in Railway Empire, so what is the benefit of making a town grow or, or what, what can you do to make it um, grow? Well, f first of all, the benefits are you can deliver more stuff, um, which makes you money, but the real money maker are uh, people. Uh, mm -hmm. Express routes, and the bigger a town is, the more people want to go there. So um, it really starts uh, to make you a lot of money once you uh, start connecting more towns and uh, bigger towns, and mm -hmm. that is really beneficial. And of course, right now that's the task we have to uh, make the towns in this region big, which is. Um, as you can see here, uh, Provence and Dauphiné. And in the uh, US map, um, there is sometimes a chance to to 
uh, yeah, to, to build up a town, uh, yeah, almost from, from, let me say, let me describe it, from scratch, there is a possibility to, to um, let towns uh, grow um, from zero to, to zero. hero, if you want to. <laughs> But yes. that's not possible. That's not possible on the Euro map. That that is absolutely true. So um, the rule we had there was to uh, if a town was um, founded in real life after uh, 1870, then you can then it is a foundable town in the game. And uh, of course, you don't have any of those uh, in the towns we included in Europe. All of them are hundreds of years old. And mm -hmm. um, many in the US are too, but some are very recent. I think the uh, most recent town we have is Oklahoma City, uh, mm -hmm. which was uh, founded in... Uh, okay, um, Americans are going to uh, slap me probably. Uh, somewhere around 1890, I believe. That late? That late? Yes, uh, that also surprised me when I learned about it, but very late. And um, so we included that one. Uh, again, uh, Americans, if uh, <laughs> if I mess that one up, um, mm -hmm. don't be too mad. I uh, At least I, I did research and I knew it at the time when I did the research, yes, what the correct date was. Yeah, sometimes you, you cannot save every date in your, your head forever. Unfortunately. Uh, pri oh, primus. I could see trains for civilian and freight and luxurious monorails for Tropico being a thing. I always enjoyed a good train ride. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, with, drone, with drones. Actually. That is true. Tax taxi, taxi drones and, and so on. I think we, we're more in the future now. I, I've played a little of Tropico 6. I think there's some <clears throat> route management with buses and such and yep. metros. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I guess I could see that. Yeah. Buses, metros, that that taxis that came with, uh, what is it, the Caribbean skies? The last one was New Frontiers, yes. Hey, no. so the, the city, the cities are really detailed. So we are looking at that just like more of a satellite view, but um, you can get uh, zoom into some bigger cities, and then you can see the people are living there. Oh, there are cars. Oh yes, we are in 1923, and uh, people walking around. Yeah, trains are coming. We can ride with the train as well. And that is always very impressive, um, as well with Port Royal 4, for example, you can do the satellite view and you can zoom straight on a ship's deck and you see the, the people working and that is uh, really impressive because this is um, your, own en your own engine. That, that is true and uh, one of the big reasons we like to use our own engine is that other engines are well, I guess they could be made to do this, but this just comes with a package with our engine. So mm -hmm. it, it is... I, I don't want to say easy, I think one of the programmers might, sl might slap me then, uh, but it does lend itself to uh, to do this type of thing. Yeah. That city looks nice. Yeah, it is really... Cool. It's not only a flat thing, you have that... How much time do I have? That, Enough. Uh, the terrain... Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I have some time. I, I really mm. like the viewers here, here at the French coast, and uh, especially uh, a city that is not super flat, but kinda on this hilly terrain. Of yeah. course, uh, it, it's a bit difficult, to, uh, difficult for our houses to keep up with the slope. But mm -hmm. I think it looks good, and there is my Oops. wonderful uh, base of operations. With my it's absolutely fine. There's no, no criticism yeah. here. It's really good. So if there was a harbor, you can link up to the freight loadout. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But this is not a ship simulation game. That that is true. It's focused on trains. We're in a parallel universe where only trains have survived the great 
War of Transportation. But, uh, yes, in a parallel universe, we could probably have harbors, uh, but in this one, we only have parallel tracks. <laughs> I like. I, I was. Um, it, it was a long time ago. I uh, had a, a a train, a train journey. It was to Cologne to come. Mm. Was it last? Yeah, it was week. Yeah, it, it was last week. It was last week. So it feels like it's two or three weeks ago. Don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I'm trying to forget a few things about uh, that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to go to Gamescom, but unfortunately, like a day before I got sick and I spent uh. Gamescom week in bed instead of at conference. That was um, mm. very unfortunate. Oh, that is a good one, Snuffert. And why did only they survive the Great War of Transportation? Question mark. Because they were most trained. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. That's Very a good, good one. Yes, that's a good one. That's the real one. Perfect. Now this one, this joke worked. Fantastic. Yeah, the Gamescom was... Um, I had a lot of trouble there uh, first of all getting in inside of it was a hustle because things didn't work uh, at the entrance I had to negotiate with securities to finally get in because it was not my fault um, but you have oh. to negotiate so I have to get in because I have to work there here look at my <laughs> tickets i'm from calypso media we have games in there Unfortunately, uh, I, and I was there with the tripod no with the yeah with the tripod and uh, with the camera stuff equipped and uh, to walk around um i i didn't know where the we we had our booth at the business era uh, area but okay that is a little bit of my fault um but i went to uh, hall 8 and then back and back to hall 8 again and oh my legs hurt a lot <laughs> then um, I had to shoot something with uh, the dust uh, the team that is uh, developing um, the Inquisitor and they were shown in the business area and Dungeons 4 was on the Microsoft Xbox booth and um, yeah but at one point I could uh, Put the, the tripod and the camera to uh, to one of our cars that was that was parked there. Yeah, I uh, I also have a, um, a another pun for our viewers who are pun appreciative. Mm. Uh, what type of shoes would you put on a locomotive? Mm. No, no, no. Trainers. Trainers. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm very sorry. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. <laughs> oh, whatever. <laughs> oh, I saw you. You you, you showed us <laughs> on the screen. I'm I'm so happy that I was not in a in a too comfortable situation. <laughs> I have control of of the stream, so I can do what I want. Mm -hmm, yeah, Fear me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, I will. Uh, uh, I won't uh, get up uh, or do something weird now. Well, as uh, long as you're wearing pants. <laughs> yeah, the, the the community was at one point. Um, we had German streams, and I started the stream. And then I built up the set so everyone could watch. So I'm uh, lifting the green screen and doing some stuff. And um, later on they said, well, we are very happy that um, now we, we could see that you're wearing pants. <laughs> <Yeah>. <clears throat> uh, from Primus, they make it difficult like traveling to another country for Gamescom. Um... No, it's not. 
Oh, that's also good, Primus. What do you call a crazy train? A loco motive. <laughs> really good. I, I really appreciate that the streams with me are turning into pun fest. I, uh, that, that is, is something so I very much enjoy. That is so good. A loco motive. But you have to, you have to uh, pronounce it like that. A loco motive. That, let every then everyone gets it great uh they make it difficult like traveling in another country for games no not really it's it's a it's a strange system so you get your ticket and your name is on it so this is your ticket and there is a qr code on it and they recommend uh, they recommend it to print that thing out in a paperless world we're trying to get in and everyone says yes yeah, the paperless office and so I haven't seen that um, or oh, I do not see that coming okay you print out your ticket with a QR code and your name and all that stuff then you go to gamescom and there is this entrance area and you have to scan the QR, QR code the QR code you have to scan that in the system and then that unlocks your new paper ticket in the entrance <laughs> at the entrance and then you can pass through where where where's where's the where's the failure the... <laughs> I just received the why can't why can't I just download that up. thing onto my smartphone having the QR code um, holding it in front of the scanner getting in and I'm pretty sure it's possible to have a system that says, okay, now Patrick has entered the games convention and his ticket is he only paid for Wednesday. So a Wednesday night, the system says, okay, this QR code is now done. It's finished. You cannot enter the convention with that one. Just a time limiter. <laughs> well, you know, Germany is very famous for its uh, bureaucracy. You wouldn't want to uh, disappoint all the people who travel for that reason here to see it but for themselves. <laughs> so, a, a, a friend of mine, a friend of my, a friend of mine, he owns a cinema. Yes, mm -hmm. a really big, a really big one. So, if you buy your ticket online, you will get your QR code on the smartphone. And then you get into the cinema, and if you want to uh, gain access to the to the to the rooms, to the the the, the yeah the cin cinema rooms, um, you have to scan that QR code, and then you can get in. And if you have if it was once scanned, you cannot come back and watch the same movie with the same QR code. Because then, no, it's only one time and done. So it must be possible to do a, a, a time limitation. A, I can understand. Uh, but the, the problem was that this entrance scanner thing didn't didn't work. And um, that, that was it. That was simple, simple as that. Unfortunate. Yeah. And there were some... You, you should have stayed home and played some Railway Empire instead. Ah, uh, maybe... <laughs> Maybe, but uh, I, I, w I decided to take the the real train. <laughs> that was your first mistake, alone. to be honest. <laughs> In German? Yes. I yes. <laughs> no, but everything went uh, went fine. Um, the journey to to Cologne. Um, what well, the next thing was? I wanted. I got thirsty and I saw there was uh, a device for slush ice. I said, yes, slush ice, this is the right thing. It was hot, I needed something cool with something tasty. And when I got closer, I realized this device was dry, closed. Da -dum. Oh, da -dum. <laughs> and one of my colleagues says, so uh, here um, at the Netflix booth, there is a lot of, um, Slush eyes. Okay, uh, I haven't seen that. It's so, okay. We head back back to the Netflix booth, and the the whole wall was covered with slush eyes devices. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was I, I was picturing the whole wall, uh, wall covered in slush eyes. 
<laughs> no, there were uh, this 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 slush ice uh, machines, uh, the whole wall. And I said, "Come on, what's going on here? I'm in slush ice heaven now." And then I got got in, and there was some sort of a chill out area. And uh, one person um, talked to me. So, um, how can I help you? I said, "What flavors of slush ice do you have here?" And this person said to me, "Oh, sorry." We are closed now. Uh, we, will ah. open, uh, we will open again for uh, in in uh, in an hour. It was the middle of the convention day. It was, I think, it was three p.m. or so. You know. Mm -hmm. So why are you closing in the middle of a convention? So maybe you can start start later or finish your day earlier. I don't know. But not in the middle of the con. It, 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 it didn't didn't cut it. Uh, well, if you have bad luck, it just keeps on uh, piling on. That's just Murphy's yeah. law. Th that's Murphy's law. Ah. That and there were other other things. Mm hmm. Other things as well. But uh, in the end, you at least got uh, got where you were going. It was nice. So, so, where can you meet so many people in real are in your bubble? Um, video games, pop culture. This is very hard. Sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like an like an alien when um, I'm with the with the squad of my wife. You know. <laughs> this stand. So I, Yes, we're talking, we're sitting there, and they are all so based, and so grown up, and sometimes they're, or very often, they're talking about that stuff, and then like a flash, oh, there is uh, a meme I can, can, can bring, or a reference, or something like that, but if I'm opening my mouth and speak that out, then no one will recognize what... Or understand what I mean. Yeah, that just happens sometimes. Oh, I forgot a grid iron. That's why my system isn't working. Oh yeah, this is very important. You have to put uh, grid irons in front of your uh, okay. connections. Now it's on the right track. Ah, yeah, that's that took me a while to figure out. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is uh, a fun. mistake. A mistake that happens very often when I'm playing that game. Is there no grid iron on this side either? No, there is. Why? What? Oh! Uh, I, I, you see, I was so confused, I, I, I then forgot to set the directions. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 I can see. Nothing is moving there. Um... Now it should work as intended. Ah, right. and I can finally f uh, put a factory in this. I just need to get enough money. You can also uh, put... Uh, how many How many uh, buildings can you build in a city? Are there three? A maximum of three. It depends yes. on, on the size. So uh, yeah. you can always put one. Then two add... 40,000 <laughs> and 3 mm -hmm. at uh, 80 or 90,000. Mm -hmm. ah, you can also put you see, a, I, uh, I haven't played this game in a while, so uh, I'm a bit fuzzy about the specifics. <laughs> no, that's not a problem. But um, I think the only important thing is how many buildings can you build during your um, your progress. Um, there's also a university, I think. Yes, there's one special building yeah. slot you can fill. Sometimes, of course, the mission fills it for you. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, so, three factories, one special building is usually mm -hmm. how it goes. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, research. Let's see what we want. Um, no? What is what is our goal today? This is what I forgot to ask. Um, right now I'm trying to finish this goal. Produce nine loads of clothing in Nice via one of your factories. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to uh, get enough money to put a uh, fashion industry in here. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm hoping I will get enough money before the um, AI builds one for me. That would be more expensive. Then you have to buy it. Then I have to buy it, yes. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to decide what research I want. Ideally something... Um, yes, the wind tunnel. That looks good. And uh, I need to put in a maintenance station here because my trains are starting to break down. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, factory first. So, um... Yeah, right now uh, I'm kind of uh, I'm I'm kind of hitting pause on actually doing stuff, and then now I'm just waiting to get it, to get the money I need. Mm -hmm. But in terms of fulfilling the task, I do have enough time. I, uh, I am very much on schedule. Great, great, great. Now to nineteen, two years. So, how much money do I actually need? Um, oh, 571, okay. That sounds uh, reasonable, but it will take a second. I cannot um, expand to that uh, red area we just saw. Is that. Oh, yeah, we have um, the blocked map section. So, ah. in the uh, main game, you can. Uh, so, in the free game, you can actually build uh, further into France and a bit into Spain. But mm -hmm. in this mission, that one ends here. Also, in yeah. the free game, you can uh, go down here into Italy, which is quite uh, quite fun. It's uh, it's an interesting challenge to build around the Apennine. The whole map that is um, so so it's split. We have North America region, and we have uh, the European um, section. And um, in one stream, we zoomed to the Los Angeles location completely resumed in and then we head to the east coast and uh, you could see at the the bottom right there is this mini map and you could really see how slowly that cursor moved towards um, east so that you, that was very impressive mm, it is a big map and it uh, took a lot to build it oh no my train is running on the wrong track Ah, dang it. Yeah, I could have seen that coming. Um... Mm -hmm. I want you to run here. So, from... No, let, let's do this differently. From Marseille, I want you to take... Th this. Go here first, and... No, after. Put this here. Now this should work. Okay. That's why my uh, my express line is not making enough money. It's not express right now. <laughs> also, I think I can put a better locomotive on here. Super. Hudson. So, so how does it work? I think it's it's very interesting for um for the people to know. So when you have uh, a really big network there and you established some some trains um at the beginning and you're researching, you're getting more and more and better trains. Um, do I have to switch the the old trains? Do I have to click on every old train um, and replace it? You do not, in fact. You can uh, do that via the um, maintenance shed, the engine shed, and uh, then mm -hmm. you find this handy. <coughs> sorry. There you will find this handy little button, replace engines, mm -hmm. and then you can select what you want to replace. Oh, very convenient. Yes. That's very important because that, that would intimidate me. I have uh, 100 locomotives running and then I get a, a, new, a new locomotive and okay, where is the old one? Uh, click on that. That would be very easy to, to forget. A couple of those. Nice. Also, you can of course ride along with the train, um, and that way you can. Uh, okay, it's not letting me. 
Okay, this one doesn't want me to, uh, to go for, but I can also do this and ride along with the center button. And I actually prefer uh, this camera view because then it's a bit removed from the train. Of course, the train is right now getting service, so that takes a second. But um, if I have a bit of time on my hands, that is something I like to do. Ah, now they built a factory. Ah, dang it. They were uh, faster? Yeah, they were faster. Ah. Uh, what did. <sighs> yeah, I didn't plan ahead there, really. That's on me. <laughs> but now, at least we can uh, enjoy the view a little bit longer. And the view is very pretty. My daughter called me. Which is in the middle of the street. No. Oh. Uh, I, I have my um, my own phone on mute for exactly that reason. Uh, people always seem to call right when you um, when you are doing something, and then uh, yes, like I have, the, I have the the vibration thing. But when you have uh, kids, you won't mute it uh, completely. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, you can call her back in a second, I guess. No, it's, it's, it's okay. I've, I've wrote her. I wrote her later. Did I? I'm in the English mode. Did I wrote her in English? No. <laughs> Why am I on the regular speed? <laughs> Some nice, nice train models. Oh yes, we spent a lot of work uh, improving what we had with Railway 1. The, the trains there yeah. already look pretty cool, but these are new and improved versions of those even. Mm -hmm. If you have a, a huge plate somewhere in a in a room with a with a handcrafted uh, version of train a train world, so you can just wreck it and mm -hmm. play this game instead, and you will save a lot of space. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, sometimes you just don't have the space to like have an actual model railway. And that's mm -hmm. why something like this comes in very handy. Definitely. That's so true. Uh, For some reason, calls again. Midstream. Can I improve the money I'm getting for passengers in any way? Uh. Shit, Cliff. Or maybe I can improve the amount of trains? I guess that would... Uh, you're not operating at capacity, no, not right now. Okay. <laughs> Advertisements... Oh yes, in transport revenue from mailbags. I'll get some more money from that one. So, um... Yeah, I uh, <laughs> kind of maneuvered us into uh, a cul-de-sac there. I, now I just have to wait for... Uh, uh, wait until the money gets gets here to be able to do more stuff. There's a chance to get a connection bonus. Oh, good point. How much? 140. I, I uh, don't think Is that will pay for itself. No. 
Oh, would it? F uh, 50 for the station, another 50 for uh, for the connection, 30 for the train. No, it will not pay for itself, unfortunately, unless I cheat and uh, get the connection bonus and um, then delete the track again. Because that is still possible, so uh, you, you just mm -hmm. have to wait a bit longer, longer until the train runs, then it's... Uh, then you can destroy the track and uh, do whatever. So, this one is delivering corn. At least I think my, my warehouse system here works. Yes, absolutely. So, if, if I would play sandbox and just saying, oh, it's oh, with all that goods, that is uh, a lot of stuff. I have to learn that game first. Is it possible to survive just focus on express trains at the beginning, for example? Or Yes, absolutely. You, you, you definitely can just focus on uh, building up your network between cities. Mm -hmm. And... Um, that works because uh, the main money is in express lines. You will not get as much money if you uh, neglect growing your cities, but uh, you will be For able sure, to yeah. sustain your network. But at one point, there are some people there. For, for them, it's it's the first um, entry in, in that uh, in that s uh, series, and there is a a lot of stuff to do, and it could be very intimidating um, at the beginning. Um, so so that sandbox mode is, is really good. Play the tutorial. The tutorial is is really good. Yes, and play the tutorial, please. <laughs> yes, definitely. Um, I've had... Um, so, when Railway Empire 2 released, I was working uh, customer service uh, and answering a lot of emails, and s there were always um, some people who either did not want to or didn't know about our signaling system and somehow mm -hmm. made the game work without signals. Which yeah. I I definitely commend. That is not easy to do, uh, mm -hmm. but please play the tutorial and please use signals. That makes your life so much easier. Yes, for sure. The the tutorial is, is really important and it, it teaches you uh, more than just uh, basics. Uh, uh, it was it's a really important thing to do that. Yeah, it's, I I see sometimes you are reading. Um, the, the the comments in the forums and you can definitely see oh you would know how to solve that if you played the uh, the tutorial that is true but we also uh, for this purpose ro wrote a gameplay FAQ it's called Railway Academy you'll find it on Steam um, a lot of the questions that get asked uh, why a, a network is not running smoothly for example get answered there and there yeah, is and, this, and this 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 book. Oh, we forgot to mention. But you have it. You can. I have it. I can show it. Give me a second. Yes. I have it right here. Um. So uh, we had the Bildner Verlag write a couple of guides. So a gameplay guide, a mission guide, and um, my favorite part: information like reward information that is not in the game about locomotives in this mm -hmm. book and you can get it in a printed version like I have or you can get the PDF versions on Steam and um, the like I said the Bildner Verlag wrote and produced it but uh, for example me I was very involved in giving feedback and reading what they wrote and uh, a lot of the tips in in the missions are based on uh, what I told them what you what you're supposed to do and of course I wrote the mission, so I, I kind of know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and this is um, there are that that ebooks are three parts, three episodes, but that a printed version is the complete um, edition of all threes. Mm -hmm. it's for those people that want to have a nice um, book in there, but you can also get it separately as ebooks. That's Insider true. knowledge. Yeah. Play the tutorial. Very good. <laughs> uh, I mean, you, you can also always check our in-game guide. 
um, mm -hmm. which is but it basically well, it's not an FAQ. It's just a bunch of information you can uh, look into if something is not working as you want it to work. So um, if if something is not running as intended, definitely check that out. And I'm now just waiting for enough money to buy that uh, factory. Of course, I want the beer factory to remain, actually. And then I will deliver cloth from Turin and uh, make it into clothes in Nice. I'm not... Um, I'm not drinking um, a lot alcohol, maybe close to nothing, and especially not beer, but I found a new drink for me. It's a, it's a beer, okay, the people would, people out there would say, no, this is not a beer, but <laughs> it, it tries to be one. <laughs> it's, it's without, it's without, it's without alcohol point and that is the reason why a lot of people would would write now no this is not a beer if it has no alcohol but this one it doesn't have if, if uh, you a... if you are not from germany you might you you might not have heard this very strong <laughs> argument but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> definitely it's it's 0.0 percent it's printed on um on the cover and it's with a uh, grapefruit flavored and it tastes really good. Oh, it's not even beer flavored. Oh, that's another knock against no, it. No, 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 no. It's 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 beer flavored, but with grapefruit. Yeah, but but at that point, it's just Radler. <laughs> it's, yeah, so it's just something. Yes, it's pretty similar. Yes. So beer so, so it algae. doesn't have alcohol, and it isn't beer flavored. Okay, uh, at that point, I have to say no. It's not a beer. <laughs> yes, it's it. Yeah, I told you, but but it's a very very famous company that produces real beer but also this one for the weak people like <laughs> <laughs> uh, beer without alcohol so you are talking about kölsch yeah this is a joke, oh, oh. A, joke a joke only germans understand and uh, some people i i guess this gets even uh, worse it's it's a joke that only people from uh, western germany would get I, okay. I'm pretty sure. I, I'm pretty sure Bavarians just don't care about uh, uh, oh, yes. about Kölsch. Oh yes. <laughs> and um, for for uh, those non-German viewers, there's this rivalry between the cities of Cologne and Düsseldorf, and Cologne and Düsseldorf both make beer and accuse each other of not making good beer. But uh, as someone from uh, a city down the River Rhine, uh, I have to say. I don't like either. I, I neither okay. like culture or art. It's, uh, I prefer pills. <laughs> okay, okay. I had a... I, I, I went out for, for dinner with my wife uh, last Saturday because it was our, our wedding day anniversary and uh, I had a, a, a mixed cola beer. Yeah, I guess that's also something you can do to beer. <laughs> <laughs> I tortured that. <laughs> you know. That poor beer. <laughs> okay. The I, I'm I'm kind of waiting until the factory is not... Oh, come on! It is not at 100%, but no luck so far. It's Murphy's Law again. Yeah. On no, no, Marseille is just taunting me at this point. They just built a fa uh, fashion industry there themselves. Ah, uh, yeah, I kind of messed that one up. That is unfortunate. But we still have plenty of time to uh, finish that task. We have about a year to get the funds. One point two mil. It, it was six hundred thousand at some point. I <laughs> ah. So aggressive. Yeah. Green. Oh, I have an idea. 
I have an idea. I'm going to manip manipulate the uh, the cloth prices to get a better deal on that uh, factory. I'm going to go here and I'm going to forbid these guys from transporting cloth and I'm going to transport uh, forbid these people from transporting cloth and that way hopefully uh, the factory is not going to be at a hundred percent anymore 1.1 million for a factory <laughs> they're nuts yeah. yeah I mean uh, but production it's... is my god 1.4 mi <laughs> this game man <laughs> Uh, I hope the AI won't. Who upgrade. was who was the game designer of that? <laughs> oh, not me! I did the missions. <laughs> uh, bridge construction cost reduction. That sounds good. Um, personnel office. Ooh, did did you hear that? Um, I'm pretty sure you're not so into um, U.S. basketball, but um, that name Michael Jordan. That that is familiar i guess i uh, guess <laughs> and, and uh, michael jordan was um the uh, the owner of that basketball team charlotte hornets and he sold his uh, he sold this team or most of the the parts of that team he, he did not own the whole one but he had the most um and he sold that for i think around three billion dollars Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> and and a couple of years ago, he bought that for two hundred seventy-five million. So I think that's, that's some a margin. Quite good, <laughs> a quite good margin, yes. This guy is a fox. Uh huh. I think my strategy is working. It. Uh... It's now filling up, it's not uh, transporting away cloth, and it's producing more than Nis is wanting right now. So I'm, I'm bound to get a, a good deal on that in a second. Yeah, you just have to uh, think smart in the game and what you can do to manipulate prices, uh, which is hard when you're trying to talk and to be funny at the same time. But, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, and I translated your pun, Snuffot. So, so maybe I'm not. I'm not very good in, in English. <laughs> English puns or German to English. This is very hard for me to, to find the that you're yeah, playing with the words and the meaning. Uh, so I'm, I'm not bad in, in German, but um, English I sometimes have. So, so I got that with uh, they trained uh, hard enough to, to survive the transportation war. That was uh, my limit, yes, to, to understand. We once had uh, a stream. With a former colleague from uh, the P from the PR, um, his uh, he's, he was from uh, Great Britain, and we played. I think we played Port Royal Four, and he was prepared with a lot of uh, water and ship jokes and puns and stuff. That was really good. So uh, what and you're saying is he was uh, flooding the stream with puns. <laughs> that that must have been quite uh, punishing for you. <laughs> <laughs> I got that one. Too. I only had one joke. Uh, let's see. So why why do divers falling backwards into the sea from from the boat? I don't know. Um, because otherwise they would fall into the boat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, that is really good. Um, 
I mean, uh, the term stream itself was a uh, water pun in itself, so... Uh, <laughs> but um, I guess when uh, you, you're always to, uh, prepared to be in uh, ship shape when, when it comes to your uh, <laughs> vocabulary in which, in which, skills. Uh, in which movie are the most puns? I don't know. The Punisher. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or Peter ah. Pan. <laughs> Peter Pan. I mean, um, I, I must say the puns in this stream are definitely gaining steam. <laughs> I think we are. We're not good at that. They would. They would clap us. A club. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, it is it is uh, easy to um, send your train of thoughts in that direction. <laughs> <laughs> finally, <laughs> I was finally able to buy the factory. Oh, great, 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 great! great. For one point three million. Okay. Um, <laughs> And I'm almost there, and then now I need to build the fashion industry next. And now I can allow my trains to transport cloth again, uh, so I actually make some money off that purchase. Um, you have to make a lot of money out of that now. Yep. Confirm. And Mystery 2. But, yeah, we still have to, some time to finish that task. It's, um, I, I may have played us, uh, I, I may have played us, but at least I played us fast, so uh, we did have enough time to correct the mistake. Great, great, great. What about my express line? Can I put more rolling stock on that one? That is the question. Okay, Marseille News. Filling up. Yes, that one is working at capacity. I'm going to put on another train. If, if you had to choose which, on which genre would you like to, to work on? Um, that would probably... Um, be a system driven game that's that's something i always wanted to try out uh, for for the non game designers in the room that's something like uh, rimworld and uh, crusader kings it's it it's, mm -hmm. it generates its own stories through a set of systems uh, mm -hmm. the the world interacts with and you are free to do whatever you want and then uh, you run up against the game systems trying to beat them and trying to achieve your goals. So um, that would definitely be something of interest. Also a strategy game. Um, say for example a game like XCOM, um, mm -hmm. something like that. Or, um, I'm, I don't know if you've heard, the, the studio that made those is closing down Mimimi Games. Uh, the mm, makers yeah, yeah. of uh, Shadow Tactics and Desperados mm -hmm. 3 and I, I always forget what the newest title is called. Uh, I definitely would like to wor work on one of those titles. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Mimimi Mi is closing down now, so uh, oh, okay. unless someone else picks up the torch, I won't be able to, which is quite sad. Uh, but yeah, I, I guess that would be something I uh, very much would also like to try my metal on. Yeah, video games, that's the nice stuff. Mm -hmm. It's always... Uh, it's always try hard to get uh, what you want made and to get the financing you need. Yeah, that, it's unfortunate. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, because that, that industry really caught up to movie productions and, and stuff when it comes to 
to the revenue and all that stuff it's it's becoming bigger and bigger and but for me it was always uh, a place where I could yes where, where, where I, I could let the the real world outside I have everything under control it's it's just like a dream was or, or so you know and when I'm finished I'm switch it off and I'm back in the real life but sometimes you need that like that 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 Instagram post um, I told you um, about earlier in this stream where uh, this this woman posted yeah my uh, my husband man uh, took a day off playing that game so yes why not it he needs that it's it's can also be good for for your mental health Mm -hmm. In other news, I was finally able to replace that factory. Oh my god. <laughs> mm. That took a while. But uh, now I just need to produce nine clothing in this and then uh, that task is done. <sighs> oh, very important question from Snufford. <laughs> if your express line impresses people, is it neutral then? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Really good one. Really Very good one. one. Yeah. Snuffled, uh also was uh, at the at the Gamescom. I think that's, uh, you you told me on Saturday, right? But but he he uh, he hasn't seen. It, it seemed like he hasn't seen anything there. Yeah, it's. He it's... was pretty. He was pretty. He was pretty limited. I think with uh, some people that came with him ah yes <laughs> of course also saturday is uh kind of the worst day to go because so many people are there and everything you want might want to see there are queues forever and yeah so um the, it's always hard to go on saturday if i if i go i always try to go on wednesday when there's fewer people there, and even then there's so so many queues. But um, the good thing about Gamescom is, uh, especially for game developers, you get to see people you haven't seen all year, because everybody yeah. is converging in Cologne. And um, if you do that a couple of years, uh, friendships really start to form. Um, I hoped I hope to see an, an old colleague of mine. Um, I don't know, do you... Do you know Rocket Beans TV? Um, I I know they exist, but I okay. I don't know too, too much they, about them. And they have Game Two, this uh, game format, which uh, is every every Saturday you can uh, watch it. Game Two, this uh, this magazine is very quite popular, and um, the the predecessor Game One was once the. Um, uh, very popular, the most popular show on MTV in Europe, and um, they did a, a success with with a game two, and one of my former colleagues is uh, working there as uh, he produces that videos and stuff. Is uh, mm -hmm. you can often uh, very often see him there, and uh, I hope that would. Um, I would meet him at Gamescom, but um, he unfortunately he was really busy. Ah, yeah, that happens. That's unfortunate when that happens. Yeah. Uh, I basically only wanted to see the indie area. I did that, and it was great. Yes, yes, yes that's one of my uh, main stops as well when I get to uh, go to Gamescom. There's always so many uh, interesting games there, and fewer queues. <laughs> <laughs> At this time, I didn't find anything really cool at the indie area. I think there was that game that looks a bit like from a from German developer that um, created Trüberbrock. Ah, what the, are they called? The build, 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 and Tonfabrik. Oh yeah, those guys. Yeah, and they made a game that looks pretty 
more polished and, and drawn. You, you would like that game, I think. It, it looks a bit like, like Hollow Knight stuff. Celeste, mm -hmm. or Hollow Knight, a mixture out of that. And it's called Constance. I haven't heard of that one. I should check I it out. Check check that out. Constance is is a new game of them. Um, that was pretty cool. And another game, I don't know who the developer is. It's called Once a Time. It's the game. It's very moody, uh, very nice. And they scanned um, dolls they made. And these dolls are the uh, protagonists of that game. It's, it looks a little bit like that stop motion stuff. Oh um, wow! That was, I, that was very interesting. I'm a, a sucker for interesting production methods, so uh, that is really cool. Yeah, once a time is is that name, and the other one from Built mm -hmm. on Torn Fabric is Constance. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I have seen the Rocket Beans TV booth, and they had a plateau for their cameras. It was almost two meters high and accessible with a step ladder, and with only partial barriers to prevent camera operators from falling down. <laughs> These senses were tingling. Uh, yes, I saw that. Uh, they had, I think, four Urza Mini Pros um, from Blackmagic Design. They had them all rigged up there and there was uh, only one camera operator over there. It, it's just like uh, you, you are working in, in the Death, Death Star, you know? <laughs> that was the... the <laughs> I saw that as well, yeah. Those cameras are pretty cool. The Black Magic Urza the pros. So, um, Patrick, any games you're looking forward to? Only Lords of the Fallen. Mm. And Dungeons 4. The Inquisitor. <laughs> All of them are Calypso titles. <laughs> no, not lots of the fallen. But, oh, uh, uh, yeah, true, I, true. I can, I cannot uh, only play. Uh, no, uh, for sure, Dungeons um, Four. Um, that's that looks really nice, really promising. Who is um, making Lots of the Fallen these days? Was that deck th deck thirteen? No, they were responsible for the last one. There is another Lots of the Fallen. And um, this is some sort of a reboot. Deck 13, they made this Atlas Fallen. Was that the I name? I am so not sure. <laughs> I haven't been fo following Deck 13 for a while. Yeah, um, deck, th deck 13, they made... Um, there was a lot of the Fallen. And they made it. And now there is a... A new one. The publisher is CI Games. And the uh, developer is Hexworks. Mm -hmm. And Deck 13, a German developer. Um, they made this Atlas Fallen, yeah, which is out for uh, two weeks or so now, or three weeks. Atlas mm, Fallen, one, one, I haven't heard of, yeah. unfortunately. It's it's an action game. Maybe you have heard of the PlayStation exclusive Forspoken? Uh, the name rings a bell, but... Um... Forspoken... Uh, I, th I think Atlas Fallen looks a bit like that when it comes to game mechanics, but I could imagine it's it's better overall as, a, as the whole package, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what are you uh, looking into this year? Hmm, let's see. Um, Hollow Knight, of course. Oh yes, you you you, you mentioned that. And um, I I have a couple of games on my wish list, but uh, I, I I'm blanking on the names right now. My, I'm sorry. My wish list my wish list is is, is really not that. Um, because at the moment I'm clearing out my backlog, ah, and and that is a lot of fun and a very very rewarding feeling. And just grab in uh, to your shelf 
get that game. Oh, I bought this once, never played it. So now, play mm -hmm. that thing, finish it. And this is so rewarding. And I started that in January. And um, so I, I only spent, I think, 50 euros for games this year <laughs> because of that. Because of that strategy. I spent about 50 euros this year just for Crusader Kings DLC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see. Where's Tropical Fallen? Yes, that sounds really good. Like a spin-off or so. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'll Tropical spin-off would be fun. Yeah. Come here to Tropico and fight where others spend their holidays. <laughs> Tropico <laughs> Fallen. Yeah. We should uh, just um, cross it, cross Tropico over with the Inquisitor. I, I, I'm, I'm sure that will go over great. Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's put everything together. The multiverse of Calypso. <laughs> yeah. Calypso should get into making uh, movies and make like that, that, live action movies for, for their games that would be uh, interesting yes I think you, you could do a really nice animated stuff out of, of dungeon series there are great great characters out there and it's very funny the humor of realm forge is is definitely very very uh, very good tropical liberation yes <laughs> make a rare empire movie hollywood <laughs> it's going yes. to be great yeah, out of Railway Empire, there is a, a lot of stuff here you can do. So that is movies true. For, for research, I used to uh, watch uh, some uh, some of the series Hell on Wheels. That was okay. interesting. Oh, okay. And um, see. Uh, so uh, yes, there there is definitely potential for interesting stories involving railways and uh, empire building. Okay. Um, There's Siegward. Nice to see you. Milan and after Milan, Turin, then Nice, then Marseille. Good stuff. One more city to uh, to the connection. <clears throat> so, um, ah, dang, I have the game paused. <laughs> and you're waiting for something to happen, and then you realize, oh, pause is active. Oh no. Uh, yeah, reliability for locomotives is good. And so now my oh I um, in the meantime I finally was able to get new tasks for us uh, mm -hmm. we, until 1927 we have to make eight different goods available in Geneva so we have to go north um, express status between Ulm and San Moritz San Moritz is here Ulm is all the way over here but uh, unfortunately. No, don't tell me the stream is ending. <laughs> <laughs> the stream will end. Sad. <laughs> Pretty sooner. Yes, uh, I, I could do that the, the, the whole evening long. Yes, for um, that's it's, it's really entertaining, really nice. Zugabe, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's really oh, nice right. to just hang out. Uh, talk about stuff and talk uh, about talk about games talk about our games and definitely yes the steam strategy fest 2023 <laughs> is uh, on the run i have a, a list a large list of stuff that you can uh, get there our calypso media games uh, for example with disciples liberation deluxe edition for 50% 
off the soundtrack standalone for Disciple Liberation, which was very good. 50% off with the Dungeon series. Dungeons 3, 75%. Off um, the DLC is fifty percent off. Grand Ages Medieval and Grand Ages Rome fifty percent off. Immortal Realms Vampire was the same fifty percent off. Uh, Omerta sixty percent off. Port Royal the Extended Edition sixty seven percent discount. Uh, Railway Empire One seventy percent discount and uh, the DLC is fifty. Percent discount. So if you're missing one or two, that's the right time. Railway Empire 2, this game we played today, our latest one, uh, with a 10% discount on um, the deluxe edition and the standard edition. Uh, the soundtrack, also a really nice soundtrack. You can um, listen to it while you're cleaning up your, your apartment or your house. It's very, very good to listen. Um, Space Based Tatopia, one of my favorite um, games, at Calypso 67% discount for the extended, the standard edition. What else do we have? The Sudden Strike games, uh, Tropico 5 and Tropico 6, 60% off, and the DLCs. Uh, 40% for Festival, 50% for Lobby. Istico New Frontiers was 15%. This is the latest one, uh, the last one we had. And yeah, many, many more. Head to Steam, Calypso Media. Check out these uh, games. That would be um, awesome. Uh, the people demand more entertainment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's Which a one? good finisher. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, thanks, Jonas. It was, as always, um, a pleasure. And um, I think we will have some more streams in the future. Yeah, it, it absolutely was a pleasure coming on the stream again and to hang out and play some more Railway Empire 2. That's always good fun. So I guess I uh, I will, I hope to be invited on stream sometime in the future again. Definitely. <laughs> And um, then I would say, take That's care it. and see you soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.